Georgia Rose from Zencuda. Welcome to the Soul Space, Monday at 7 o'clock. Hope you'll join me every week. If you're a new viewer, welcome. Going to see who's on in a few minutes. But first, you guys know the drill. We have to share the show. Share the show. So if everybody out there could just share the show, it would be so absolutely wonderfully awesome. And I'm going to do that to a couple of my sites now. And then we're going to talk about some astrology. And we're going to talk about, oh, I don't know, everything that's been going on. Maybe somebody will call into the show, tell us their story. Want to know how that new moon went for you guys last week in Taurus. It was quite a um, an energy. We have a lot of planets in Taurus, fixed energy. So let me look at my comments, see who's coming into the soul space tonight, who we got in here. Very hectic day for me. My company actually today did a uh, um, an event at an amusement park and I didn't get a chance to go because I was busy. I was busy working. Everybody else was having fun. I have Monica on. People are starting to come on now. Sarah, can't see who this is. And Rothney, welcome everybody. We're going to have a bunch of people in coming on in tonight. So I want to talk about the astrology a little bit first because I had three people text me today and ask me what's going on with the energy. This energy feels a little bit wonky. And I got to tell you, it is wonky, 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 wonky. We've got a lot of energy in Taurus. We've got energy in Scorpio. And those are fixed signs. And then we have Mars in Leo, which is also a fixed sign. So what does that mean? It means the energy is a little bit stuck and unmoving. For instance, my hair today... <laughs> has these little things going on with it, like little nun wings or something. And they're just stuck there. No matter what I do, I've wet them and I've, you know, done things. And I don't know, my hair's just like, whoa, today. So you'll have to put up with my weirdo hair. So yeah, a lot of fixed energy. And when energy is fixed, what happens is we get in situations that feel like we just can't seem to be understood. They're not moving forward. Things are like very stagnated and a little bit slow but that energy will actually ease off as the month progresses once we get to the end of the month. So big news right now with astrology is we have a big T-square. I did a video on that if you'd like to look at my space, um, either my um, Facebook page, then Kuda Soul Space or Georgia Rose. And I have a big uh, video up about the explanation of what a T-square really is. But I'm going to go over some of that also with you guys tonight. Also, we've got the sun going into Gemini later this week. And when that happens, of course, the energy really changes because Gemini is an air sign. And then we get out of all this earth energy. So that's going to be well received as well. So lots of fixed energy, lots of things slow down. Um, the last half of May, you guys know there was that new moon last week that set off some things, but that really was the end of eclipse season. So we will find the energy, as I said, towards the end of the month, starting to slow down a little bit. Um, what I want to talk about today with this T-square that we have in the sky with Mars, Jupiter, and Pluto is it's releasing a lot of energy. And it's doing that in a way that actually makes us see things that we didn't see before. Things will be revealed. And these are things a long time coming. Like I had something happen to me today that actually revealed a situation that's been going on a really long time and I had no idea. And when I got this truth and these things were unraveled and un and revealed, I actually saw why things have been playing out the way they have been for a very long time because of this other dynamic, this other power dynamic that had been going on that I didn't put together and I really didn't know too much about. And so when that was revealed, it was like, oh, now I understand why everybody's been acting like this. So that's the kind of thing that's going to happen. These are like truth bombs, but it's also Pluto is the planet of our shadow. Pluto is the planet of things that are hidden and also hidden deep within ourself. So when Pluto is in an opposition to Mars, which is our energy that makes things move forward, it's our aggression, our assertion. Mars is the god of war, right? And Pluto is a planet that's very much transformational through death. So these are two very... Um, large energies, they're intense energies, and they're opposing each other in the sky. So one, uh, Pluto is at zero degrees of Aquarius, and then Mars just went into Leo. And then on the T, right, you've got these two planets opposing each other. And then on the T, you have Jupiter, and Jupiter expands everything. 
But because Jupiter's in a square, it's in a square to Pluto and it's in a square to Mars, that's an energy of tension, just like the opposition between Pluto and Mars is. So what does all that mean? So it means that we have conflicts, we have power struggles this week, and it means that they're happening in a very intense way in order for us to understand what we need to work on and what we need to change in order to bring our life to a really new potential. Um, this is about the shadows, the hidden parts of ourselves. You know, I like to think of them as that murky water, you know, looking down into murky water and you really can't see what, what's underneath there. You know there's something under there, but you just can't really picture what it is. And I like to think of that as murky water. And Pluto is that murky water. It's the things that we need to bring to the surface to be transformed, to be, you know, enlightened. Once out of the dark and into the light, they become things we can understand and deal with. However, when it's opposing Mars, these things come to the surface, like think of a volcano in the ocean, like the water just bubbles up and you're like, oh, wait, what's that? Oh my gosh, now I got to deal with this. But in the long run, it's good for us and it's good for our transformation and it can be very healing. But there's these big energy releases in a very powerful transformational way. And we're going to see that play out now in the next week. Um, Jupiter uh, in square to Pluto expands that energy and it brings in things that are hidden, but they want them to be revealed because they're they're for our own healing. They're for our own, our own crises to be manageable, you know, so it's going to be a rough week, but then it'll be fine. Also, what I wanted to talk about was now you've got Jupiter also in that square to Mars because it's a T, right? So Jupiter and Mars together, Jupiter will expand aggressive energy. It will span, expand warlike energy. So this is not an energy that you really want to ta go to tango with somebody. You don't want to be having those big conversations about conflicts unless you really think it's going to go calmly and well. This can be a very eruptive energy. So just wait a few more days for that. Um, this energy all exacts on the 23rd. And I think that might be tomorrow, actually. Yeah. And and then Wednesday and Thursday, we have some other things coming in. The moon passes over Leo. So then we have the moon opposing Pluto. Um, and then the moon is squaring Jupiter. When that happens, it's going to be a repetition of some of the energy that we got last week. This is completing energy from the eclipses. This keeps resonating. This is the final hurrah for whatever's been going on since that eclipse season for you. Um, but by Memorial Day weekend, Uranus is trining the sun and the moon as well, and they come together and in a trine, and that's going to be some really nice energy. So we should have a really nice Memorial Day weekend. But first, we have to get through this grand T-square. And what happens in, is from the 19th until the 29th, we're still in this Taurus new moon energy, and it's an energy cycle. So we're going to have that shadow brought up to the surface, these unhealthy parts of ourselves that we don't like to look at. They're going to come up and we're going to have to realize, you know, where is, this, is our responsibility in this? What do we really have to accept as being something that we need to change in the way we react and, and respond to people? Um, it's got a healing potential, like I say, because this is also for sharing and sharing deep patterns so that we can change them. Um, this is an energy of... If I act in this negative way and keep continuing to do so, I'm going to get the same thing over and over. So let me change this negativity. This is also a contest and conflict between, because Pluto is in Aquarius and Jupiter is in Taurus, Aquarian energy is for the greater good. Aquarian energy is what's good for the whole. It's futuristic, visionary um, energy. But Taurus energy, where Jupiter is, is more singular. It's more, what resources do I have within me? How do I hold on to what I have while still doing something good for the group? So we might see, especially with that moon in Leo, Leo is the lion. It's the energy of I, me, might is right. Um, I'm important. You know, I'm the, the most important thing. You should worship me kind of energy. Uh, my feelings are more important than anything. So with this kind of a conflict going on in a T-square, it's going to be which is more important, what's good for the whole or what's good for me, right? So you're going to have that energy of um, being selfish as opposed to, no, I need to step up and do what's right in the future for the good of the planet or the good of the whole group. 
And you're going to have that in conflict with that Leo energy that's like, no, I don't want to think about everyone else. I'm a little selfish. I'm the king of the jungle. This is about me, people. Why are you talking about the whole group for? You know, so that's the conflicts. And this also oftentimes plays out in our life in families as um, the reliable one who usually is a little bit more quiet and doesn't need the spotlight as much. And then you've got the favorite, the one that's always in the spotlight, but they really never do anything. That's how this energy actually plays out this week is there's going to be some conflicts between the, almost like that sibling energy, that sibling rivalry. But it's really about what parts of ourselves do we need to heal so that we can be in harmony with all of these energies? So just take that to the bank and take that with you because you are going to see a lot of controversy about that, you know, is the one that's reliable and quiet, that resourceful Taurus type energy or the Leo lion, you know, puffing themselves up. No, look at me. I did this for you. I'm more important. And then it's all in opposition to this Pluto in Aquarius, which is I need to make you see things because you need to act more globally, not just about yourself. So you're going to see a lot of things play out in workplaces and all kinds of stuff. And then as if that wasn't enough, where Jupiter is, we've got the North Node and across the sky in Scorpio, we've got the South Node of the Moon. So it's actually not just forming this T-square, it's doing the Grand Cross. And so all those energies are in play and we've got that North Node and the South Node, which I talked about a lot on last week's video. It's the same setup, only now it's really exacting. So expect disruptions because you're going to have to do things differently. Okay. And um, that's really the astrology now. Also, just remember when the nodes of the moon are involved, a lot of people always ask me, what are the nodes of the moon? Because not every astrologer uses them. Nodes of the moon are actually our arc of development. The nodes of the moon show us north node, where we're supposed to go, what we're supposed to accomplish in this lifetime. And the south node is an indication of the things we really are supposed to let go of and leave behind, but we don't like to do it because they're really com comfortable. So, you know, if you had to kind of um, use an analogy, the south node is the warm, comfy blanket that maybe the cat's been like rolling around in for years and it's kind of stinky, but you don't want to wash it because it's just so nice and cuddly and you want to keep wrapping yourself in it, but it's really a little offensive and, and it's not the best thing for you. You, but you keep doing it even though every time you wrap yourself in that blanket, your eyes itch or you're sneezy or your health suffers. And the North Node is you without any blanket, not even needing the cat, being completely independent and in your full epitome of health. So that's like how the North and South Node work. The North Node is what you're really supposed to be doing, what the universe wants you to do, what your creator energy really put you here to do. And the south node is the stuff that we really want to just do because it's comfy and we don't have to exert ourselves and, hey, why can't I just do this, you know? So do you have the character to go towards your your north node? That's the arc of development. Um, and when the nodes square something, like right now they're squaring um, Pluto, when that happens, the, the planet that they're squaring takes on a different energy and sometimes can be more amplified. So that's why we have such a deep energy right now of transformation. And also I want to just add in, because I know I was listening to the radio on the way over here and they're talking a lot in the globe about the um, debt in America and America's debt ceiling being raised and that kind of thing. Taurus energy, when we have this much energy in fixed signs in Jupiter and Taurus, that is an energy that will play out in finances. For the most part, Jupiter in Taurus is usually prosperity. Taurus is a very prosperous sign. It's a very resourceful sign. And usually when we have planets there, you will find prosperity comes, especially to us as individuals. But the caveat to that is it is squaring you know, Pluto and it's squaring Mars. So Absolutely expect financial reversal globally in the world stage. Um, something, I don't think it's going to be as easy as people are saying with this debt ceiling and everyone's like, well, of course they'll raise the debt ceiling and we really don't have, you know, any choice. They're not going to, you know, put us in financial hardship as a country. But I have to say it's going to be really interesting to watch because traditionally when Jupiter is in Taurus and especially when these other planets are involved and these other planets, Pluto and Mars are called the malefics because they're usually can be very detrimental planets in a chart. Um, usually that's when, you know, we have stock market crashes, we have global financial crises, things like that. Now I'm not predicting that, but I am saying that under this sky, you will find some kind of a very drastic change 
in a financial system of some kind. Now that could be, you know, digital currency or any kind of thing, but you will absolutely find under a sky like this, that there's some weird stuff going on with finances and different types of finances because Aquarius is involved as well. This can be something futuristic where the way that we, um, you know, pay for things and the way we exchange things really, really changes. But I'll tell you, the, the dollar is, U.S. dollar is definitely something to watch and how this whole thing plays out because it's really feeding right into the astrology. Um, so Mars is that stick of dynamite that is going under the murky waters of Pluto. And so think about, you know, in the depths of the ocean, if they set off a big charge, that all that water that will come up and the dirt and the debris and the murkiness, that's kind of the week that we're having. So things are going to definitely be revealed. Things are going to come out. And this has been a very heavy processing cycle for a lot of us. It's leading to a lot of transformation, a lot of freedom, a lot of liberation, and that will continue until the end of this month. Um, so the best advice I can give you about working with this energy and the reason why we are given really what's a divine gift of this energy to work in that is so beautifully revealing and brings our, you know, hidden parts to the surface. And maybe there are things that we really don't always want to look at, but in the long run, it's really beautiful that we get the opportunity to heal them and bring them out because once they're illuminated, they no longer have as much fear and anxiety for us. So this is really a way to get liberated. And oftentimes, if you watch the show, or you've been watching my um, content for years, you'll know that I always say when you were a kid, if you remember you know, sometimes like you would have to go to sleep and your room would be dark and mom or dad would turn off the light. And then everything in the room became a monster, right? The clothes on the chair or the jack in the box on the shelf or the toys or the stuffed animal, all of a sudden your imagination would start to run wild with you. And you'd be like, oh, there's a monster. There's probably something under my bed. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And maybe you would get like, very anxious. And maybe sometimes you would even cry out or call for your mom or your dad. And they'd come in and the first thing they do is switch on the light switch. And all of a sudden, everything in the room went back to being the teddy bear, the jack in the box, the clothing on the chair, you know, and it wasn't scary. That's illumination. When you turn the light on and suddenly your illusion of something that you should be fearful of is dispersed, it's dismantled, it's dissolved in that moment. And the planet Uranus is also in Taurus energy. And Uranus is that lightning in the room. It's the flicker of the light so that you now know where everything is and you're acclimated. So all of this energy is very intense. It's for very heavy processing. But what I can tell you is the things that are being revealed are being revealed because they're things that you have to deal with. They're things that you need to acknowledge. They're things that you need to be emotional about. And that's my best guidance I can give you in this energy. You want to acknowledge the emotional weight you're feeling. You want to really get things off your chest if you need to in a very loving way. And sometimes that's journaling or just having conversations with yourself. I really don't think it's the week that you want to have heavy conversations with someone who's not always reasonable because it can be very igniting. But the bottom line is at the end of this month, I guarantee you most of us who have allowed the enlightenment to flow and who have allowed... Um, newness to come in, to who have been brave enough to go into those hidden places, many, many of us are going to find that we have released and let go of a lot of outdated modes and a lot of outdated things that no longer serve us. And so I think it's really important to look at what's coming up. Don't run from it. You know, sit in solitude, sit in stillness. This is a beautiful week from the universe when we really can make strides in our own healing and finally work through, allow that eruption from the murky water to come up. And then we never have to go through it again because now we see it for what it is. We've put it where it needs to be. We've healed it. We've acknowledged it and we can move forward. Um, also the only other energy, and then we're going to go to cards that I want to talk about is Mars is trining Neptune. Neptune is still in Pisces. This is in the energy that we're doing. There is an emotion that's going to come up for many of us, and that emotion is grief. And the reason for that is, as I was just saying, there are parts of ourselves that are hidden. And whether we know it or not, we cling to these parts because they help us survive and maneuver and have access to the life that we really want in some ways. Um, but we keep them suppressed. 
But there's a lot of things inside us that we do access, defense mechanisms, conditioning, things that we are used to doing, responses we give. You know, it could be anything as innocent as you have a certain response when people ask you a certain question, you just always give that response, you know, and it works for you, but does it really? It could be something even more important, like how are you in relationships and how do you relate to people? Like, are you a serial dater? Are you someone who's never faithful? Are you someone who... um just gets along to go along and never really says your piece. Like what is it that's really inside you that you really don't want to deal with, but you know, deep down it's true about you and something you need to change. That's what comes out in this energy. And those parts of ourselves, although they might be unpleasant or have a quality that is suppressing or restricting for us and not our best self, we're attached to them. And we're attached to them because we think we need them to survive. We think we have to act a certain way in order to get validation. And we've become so comfortable acting in these ways or speaking in these ways or, or working in these ways that we are attached to them for our survival in certain ways. So Neptune trining Mars brings in an energy of grief and loss because as we let go of these attachments, even though they're unhealthy, as we let go of them, we're letting go of really deep parts of ourselves. So when you do feel that loss or that grief, know that some things are absolutely painful and sad. You know, today I had a revelation that came to me and it's very painful and very sad. And I can go into judgment and woundedness and I can say, wow, I, I never expected that from that person. I, I'd feel so disarmed and so vulnerable and so hurt. Or I can say, wow, that was then, this is now. The, the logical part of me can understand why they acted that way. And, and it wasn't good for me, but that was what they had to do at that time. It was a moment in time, right? And I can move on from it and learn. And I can realize, okay, I, I need to be sad for a day or I need to really process this. You know, I feel wounded, but I don't need to stay there. Because in the past, maybe I did that a little too much. And maybe now I can come out of that woundedness and really glean something from this. That's the energy. It's the energy of the parts of ourself that get revealed. Sometimes that happens in anger. Sometimes you have an argument or a conflict with someone and things are revealed and you're so angry. But when that fire dies, you're left with the emotion. You're left with the murky water. And that's where the healing and the medicine really is. So this week is a rough week for a lot of energy that is in conflict. There's a lot of planets and sky that's really having hard conversations, but there's medicine in that. So don't forget to use it and go for it and take it and, and allow it to develop you even further. Um, like I always say, there's treasure in the trigger, right? And so the emotions are going to come up, grieve them, release them, let them go. We've got Chiron, Chiron in Aries, which wants us to take charge and get things done in our healing spaces, right? So welcome to the soul space because we are here, here to heal people. So let me um, see what's in our comments. How are you guys doing tonight? Was that like a little bit of too heavy a trip or what? Then there's the monkey in the middle. Yeah, I thought I was the monkey in the middle until tonight I found um, like a half hour before I had to leave for the show. I got like the dynamite dropped and I was like, wow, I'm not the monkey in the middle anymore. Now I'm just, everything's my fault. <laughs> Who knew? That's why they hated me. Anyway, so I digress. Getting too personal now, right? Yeah, it's crazy energy. I know you guys are all feeling it. Oh, thanks, Dawn. I'm glad that you uh, got a chance to watch me live tonight. Um, yeah, so Monica, I appreciate that. And then there's the monkey in the middle. There will be a lot of triangulation. It's funny that you say monkey in the middle because there will be a lot of triangulation in this energy. And by that, I mean threes. Things will come in threes and also you'll have dynamics with three people and it'll be a total triangulation. I know narcissistic personalities use triangulation a lot. You're going to see a lot of that this week. Um, I am going to pull a card for you. And Liz, I never got a chance to call you. I am so, so um, sorry. I actually just had a really busy week at work last, last few days. So, okay. All right. I'm going to start pulling some cards. Anita. Yeah. It's been a Monday for sure. And Laureen's feeling that energy and we love you, Georgia. I love you too. I love you guys. I, you know, I got to tell you just like, I'm going to be vulnerable for a minute. <laughs> so 
I had like something kind of happen. This, you know, it's nothing tragic. Believe me, it's nothing tragic. Just stupid everyday life stuff. But um, it happened like literally like at six o'clock and I had to get here in the studio and do the show and everything. And you guys are saving me because you're taking me out of my head space and bringing me back into the soul space. And it's really a lesson for me and I'm going to share it with you guys. We get so in our heads about everything. And look, I'm a Libra sun. So even though most people think of me as a Scorpio because I have like five planets there, but we get so in our heads. And for those of you who are, are air signs, you know, Aries, I'm sorry, not Aries. Um, I'm thinking air, Aries. Um, those of you who are air signs, Libra, um, what's my air signs? Gemini. Um, uh, my mind just went blank. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so funny. Got to look at my chart. Um, for those of you who are air signs, this, you know, especially this week, try and ground because we got like the woo-woos. We're like so in our head. We're thinking about stuff that happened in like 1995 and what we should have said then. It's way too much. It's way too much energy. So just, you know, all my air signs out there, make sure that you are in a place where Aquarius is the other air sign. I couldn't think of it. Make sure that you are in a place where you're grounding yourself somehow because the, the air energy is really crazy. So I'm going to click off really fast so you guys know. We've got the moon today is in Cancer. Moon in Cancer is very emotional. So today's like kind of a weepy emotional day. It's actually right up against um, Venus, which is, you know, the things we love. So yeah, I can feel that. And I got the oots. Um, <laughs> and Mars just went into Leo at the first degree. We've got that obviously opposing Pluto, which is hovering around Aquarius. It's on its way to go back to Capricorn. It's at zero degrees Aquarius. So in a very short while, because Pluto is going to go retrograde and right back into Cap, we get to finish up all the last 15 years of stuff. We've got Saturn still in Pisces. We've got um, Chiron and Aries, which is the wounded healer planet. That's where all this healing is coming from. And then in Taurus, we have the, the nodes of the moon. We've got Jupiter. We've got Mercury is still in Taurus. And we've got the asteroid Vesta. All of that and Uranus is in Taurus and the, the sun is just going to Gemini today. So this is all that earthly energy. The sun going into Gemini today is a lot of air. The sun will be in the, an air sign for the next month. And that's why all my Aries out there, I don't mean Aries, the sign, I mean airy, airy, airy people. All my airy people out there, make sure you ground the next 30 days because you're going to be really in your head. You're going to have trouble sleeping, things like that. So ground. Okay, so now I'm going to go to cards. And then, of course, the south node is in Scorpio. So much fixed energy in between Leo, Scorpio, and Taurus. There's so much fixed energy. It's like everyone's just stubborn, 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 stubborn. They don't want to give in on anything. All right. So, okay, I'm going to go back to my Facebook page. Who I got here? All right. So I'm going to go back to Strong Island so I can pick, pull some cards. I should be picking cards for myself, let me tell you. All right. And if anybody wants to call into the show, we got time tonight. Okay. Capricorn, well, Capricorn is Earth. So we got so much in Earth. So you're going to feel like, um, you're going to feel stagnant. You're going to feel like you're in quicksand, my earthly people. If you're a Taurus, you're going through a lot of stuff. Taurus people right now, a lot of upheaval. A lot of upheaval for my Tories. Um, so I'm going to pull some cards. I'm going to go from the top down tonight. How's that sound, people? Um, Bobby, what time is it, do you think? What's the time? Oh, cool. So we've got plenty of time. My shirt keeps creeping up on me. Okay. So I'm going to first go to Liz. And I think Stephanie Kalinoff is out there watching. She is. Steph, caught me live. Okay. If anybody wants to call into the show, numbers on the screen, 516-945-9099. Let's talk about just BSing tonight. I just feel like chatty. You know why I feel chatty? Because the sun is in Gemini. Gemini is all about communication. Okay. So my first card is for Liz. Liz, I got the king of pentacles. You know what that means, right, baby? Abundance is coming to you. And Liz, aren't you a Taurus? You're a Taurus, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, you just had a birthday. So Liz is definitely feeling a lot of this stuff. This is like the years of, of um, change for you. So let me pull a soul card to go with your King of Pentacles. And when Bobby stops wandering around the studio and bringing me clocks, he's going to go in the booth. He's laughing at me now. He's going to go in the booth and actually give me a camera on the table. 
We have a new intern. What's the intern's name? Vinny, the intern. Vinny, I'm going to have him on the show. Vinny, give a shout out. Say hey. Vinny said hey. Okay, so we've got the King of Pentacles. Calls- King of Pentacles? King of, King of Plentifuls. King of Pentacles for Liz. And we've got this beautiful card, which is from the Soul Card deck, which actually is like two energies. It, and this, I, it almost looks like a two-faced card. But what this energy means to me oftentimes is shedding. Like we were just talking about, you're shedding the old for the new. Uh, Liz, I feel like you're definitely coming into a time in your life where this is going to be about you in a very healthy way. Like you have spent so many years worrying about other people. I feel like now your focus is more on yourself and it should be. Yeah. Cause the other card I got is you looking out over the world, you know, the, um, the three of wands. So definitely, you know, do your meditations and really go into meditation a little more deeply because I feel like there's things that are going to come out in there of what you really want to do for your real inner self. Like this isn't about abundance, making money or anything like that. This is about you're coming home to yourself and the abundance that lives there. So if you're trying to make any decisions or decide what your next step is, definitely start meditating a little more because I think that will really come out, out for you. Yeah. I remember now Laureen and, and, and um, Liz are Taurus sisters and Janine, this card's for you. My little, um, my little earthly person. Jean's, Janine's earthly. I'm airy. She's earthly. We had a great time last uh, week. Janine and I went to a fundraiser together. We were having fun in the photo booth. It was actually very cool. I don't get to see my friends very much. Okay. What have we got to tell me to cut the deck? And Janine has justice card woohoo, and the judgment card. Those are two really good cards to have together. So the justice card, my peoples, is... Justice is, you know, things coming into fruition as far as something that's been out of balance coming into balance. So when we get the justice card in a reading, especially when it's next to the judgment card, this means new beginnings, like something finally begins to become fair and equitable. And what I wanted to say about this, like the astrology energy this this week also is this is um, a lot, when you have this many planets in Taurus, and I was talking about the financial market, this is a lot of energy of redistribution and authority coming in to redistribute, redistribute something or reappropriate or re-recognize. I want to say re because this planet's in retrograde. So this is really about something you felt has been out of bounds and unfair is now going to become fair. And now the judgment card next to this is not a judgment card. The judgment card in the tarot is actually a card of new beginnings. And as you can see, it has these people, you know, they're naked. They're like almost like rebirth, like you're birthing, right? You're in your birthday suit. Um, They're coming out of a grave because they're being rebirthed. And you have this cross. Judgment card can also be something about health, not taking care of your health properly. But then you have this angel with a a horn. And this is um, an example. uh, It's to symbolize Archangel Gabriel. So it's rebirth because you've received clear messages about where you should go. So when we have this card in the tarot on a spread with the justice card, this means things definitely coming into your favor and things finally coming into balance and in, in bounds. So if there's been a situation that just has not worked out in your favor, or you've been waiting for it to kind of reverse itself, it is coming for you. Okay. Um, I'm going to pick a card from Monica. I got all purple hearts from Monica. Thank you. You know, I work in violet light lately. Whenever I meditate more so than ever before, I am just getting violet and purple all around me. I actually went shopping this past week. Bobby will be proud of me. He's always telling me look cool on the show. I can't always do that. Sometimes I come from another place, you know, but, um, I went out this weekend and I got a lot of purple stuff. I think I'm becoming, I think I'm becoming Prince or something or the artist formerly. I'm the artist formerly known as Georgia Rose. <laughs> um, I got, cause I thought it would look really cool on the set, some lavender and pinks and purple. So I, I actually have a whole rack. You'd be proud of me, Bob. I have a whole rack in my guest room of show clothes. Those are show clothes. <laughs> oh, now I just put the pressure out. People are going to expect me to look really good. So, okay, Monica. I have the Queen of Swords and the Ten of Cups. Ten of cu- Cups is tremendous abundance. It's the family card. It's a wedding card. A lot of astral- a lot of uh, tarot readers think about when I see the Queen of Swords and this. This is family harmony. This could possibly be a wedding. There might be an announcement coming soon, um, or someone is having some kind of a big celebration. But this is definitely, I feel, the Queen of Swords is you. 
I feel like this is you actually now finally getting to harmony and balance with something that's been really tough for you in family life. And everything comes out really great because the Ten of Cups is one of the most abundant cards in the deck. And when we have that symbolizing family and the Queen of Swords just feels like you, I feel like you're starting to get your bearings again. I feel like you went through a little topsy-turvy time and now you're coming out stable. So look forward to that. You know, this is going to come. Yeah, Libra. Yep. Uh, Monica's a Libra and the, the uh, Queen of Pentacles is the Libra card. Uh, Stephanie, I help you every day. Oh, Steph, you help me every day. Stephanie's going to help me with some of my social media videos because she's a, a whiz at that. So we work together in real estate, Stephanie and I, and these next cards are for Stephanie. And for some reason, Mama C just popped into my head, Stephanie's mom. So I'm going to pick cards for Stephanie and her mom. How does that sound? Sounds good. I'm a little flighty tonight. I feel like it's because the sun went into Gemini. Whenever the sun is in Gemini, that end of May into end of June, I'm always like very airy. I get very like I can't focus. And it's not good because I'm working on really heavy writing right now and working on a coaching program that I'm going to be putting out to the masses. Oh, we got the Leo card for you. I love that card. I don't know if anyone in your family is born in August or a Leo, Steph, but I'm definitely getting the Leo card. I'm going to explain that in a minute. It's number eight. And the number eight is very, very auspicious. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to have to give a shout out to my friend, um, um, Angela. Her son actually is going to be playing on the Chicago Bears. He just got a contract and his number is 88. So look for uh, look for Caffrey, 88 on the Chicago Bears this year. Um so Steph, the strength card, and then I got the five of cups. So this is very mixed energy. So I feel like the five of cups actually is your dad coming in uh, because the five of cups is a card of grievance. It's a card of we, when we grieve someone and, and sorrow, but I feel like you're not in that. I feel like this is your dad showing up saying, you know, kind of don't, don't be sad for me. He's in a wonderful place. But I want to talk about this strength card first. This Leo lion strength card. First of all, right now we have Mars and Leo. So I'm taking this as a real a card of real assertion and a card of um, powerful uh, energy moving forward. And if you notice in the lion card, which I call this my strength, my lion card, there's an infinity sign over the head. That is a symbolization of nothing is impossible. Everything's infinity. And so being that this is a card of number eight, which is an auspicious number, and you have the infinity sign over the head, I'm taking this as your business, whatever you are trying to do in order to prosper or have prosperity is really going to start taking off in a big way. I also get this card is a very strong family bond. And I know you are second generation with what you do. Your mom did it before you. I almost feel like dad is coming in saying, I'm right behind you. I, you got this. And then the next card that I'm going to pull is this card of the Nine of Swords. And the Nine of Swords is a card of restlessness, sleeplessness, is a card of worry. But oftentimes when we see the Nine of, car of Swords, especially next to a strength card like we see, it's needless worry. It's worrying about something that you really don't need to be worrying about and overthinking something. So don't do that. Be a little bit more lighthearted, especially where the planets are in Gemini with the sun in Gemini this month. It's all about communication. So don't make that too heavy. Make that something that, yeah, the next card I got was the star card, which is moving forward. All good wishes coming to you. Dad giving you gold stars. Look at this beautiful gold star. For some reason, I see dad just giving you this gold star and mom too, but dad definitely coming through for that. So whatever you're doing, keep doing it because they're showing me that that is absolutely you're on the right road. And this is also a lot about purification, getting out the old things that are outdated, you no longer need in your life. That could be people, situations, places, ways that we think, perceptions. But this is actually a great spread. You're fully supported by the other side with your dad. Very strong family bonds taking place. Luck with the number eight. Um, the infinity sign, nothing is impossible. Stop losing sleep. Don't be, you know, sleepless nights. It's needless. Whatever you're worried about, it's needless because this star card is bringing it all home for you. This is complete and total balance. It's finding home within yourself and prosperity in the three-dimensional world. So that is like a great reading. And I can't, you, dad is just giving you gold stars, honey, for whatever reason. I don't know if that has a significance, but just show me gold stars. Okay, just scrolling down. Uh-oh, Steph got chills. She said, now that's amazing. I'll share with you tomorrow that hits home. Oh, okay, good. 
I'm glad. So dad, dad's telling us stuff. Um, okay. Next card I'm going to pull is I'm just looking in the thing. I did Steph, Monica, Janine, Cheryl, Cheryl, yo, is on. Hey, Cheryl. Okay. We're going to pull a couple of cards for Cheryl. They're telling me two tarot and a soul card for you tonight, Cheryl. It's going to shuffle a little bit more because I always shuffle and a lot of times the same cards come out. So I told myself I have to start showing you guys that I'm shuffling and I'm going to shuffle more on camera. After me, we have tea time with Teresa Farrell. She's wonderful. She always has people from Hollywood. Um, Queen of Pentacles for you, Miss um, Cheryl. And then I've got the Seven of Wands. They said two cards and a soul card. So we're going to put this back in the deck and a soul card. Oh, beautiful. Oh, wow. Okay. So I got excited about these cards for you. So I have the Queen of Pentacles. And Cheryl, the Queen of Pentacles is a card of abundance. A Queen of Pentacles is like a boss bitch in biz. Like it's it's a boss, boss person, like a, a boss girl, you know, boss lady. So I think that's you because you definitely, you know, kill it in business and you're very successful. So this to me in this spread would be you. There's more um, success coming your way. If a situation has arisen recently where you're a little bit frustrated or it's not going as fast as you like, just know that by the beginning of June, everything, absolutely everything falls into place for you. So don't sweat the small stuff. Then I got the seven of wands. The seven of wands is a card of competition. It's a card of being in battle. But if you look at this card, you can see that the gentleman, you know, fighting these other wands, right? He's got this wand in his hand, which are like sticks he's risen above the others. It's like he's winning the fight and his staff or wand has new growth leaves on it, which means new beginning. It means, it means he's, he's triumphant. He's, he's fighting the fight. He's still in the fight, but he's, he's starting to get the winning edge. Okay. And then this beautiful soul card, angelic energy, this beautiful goddess with all of these golden wings around her. And it really reminds me of goddess. If you're familiar with goddess pose in um, yoga, because she has her arms up in surrender like this. And what this tells me is whatever the universe is trying to bless you with, allow it, surrender to it. You don't have to control it. You don't have to do anything. Things are going to fall into place. You are ahead of this other competition that we're seeing in this, this wand card. You're on the top of the hill. You've reached the mountain. You can look down and fight off what you need to fight off. You are on the throne as the queen of pentacles and you've got the coin coming to you. And then you've got all this beautiful support coming to you from the other side from abundance and from creator energy. So if you're worried or frustrated about anything, just know that you've got prosperity coming to you and you don't have to um, think so hard. It just will come. Okay. I'm looking at my hair on camera. I just can't get over my hair tonight. I feel like I'm wearing a, some kind of weird hat with wings. Um, okay. Who's next? I got Marianne Sabatino and I hope Marianne's feeling better. Last week on the show, she was talking about you know, really having a hard time just had been through so many things. And sometimes the energy just gets so heavy. And I just want to send that out to all of you because the energy can be a little bit heavy with this many, much planets in earth. And you've really just got to um, make sure that you are doing things to bring yourself into enlightenment. And the other thing I'm going to say, and I had a private coaching session with someone today, and this came out because a lot of times, even in a private coaching session that is about business, I will um, bring in astrology. And whatever your sign is, your sun sign, right? And maybe to, maybe next week on the show, I'll do this. Whatever your sun sign is, if you're fire, earth, air, or water, and you'll know if you watch Tarot Tuesday on Zenkuda after this, because on Tuesdays on the Zenkuda YouTube, I do Tarot Tuesdays, and I break everything up into fire, air, water, and earth. So you'll get to know what sign your sign is, on your where your sun is. Um you want to really make sure that you are working in the personality of that sign. Like if you're a fire sign, you're going to get bored easily. You're going to, you know, want to start something new and you're going to want to be in the, in the thick of things and be in the excitement. So, you know, when you don't have that, you're going to get really bored really easily and your energy level is going to go down. So whatever your sun sign is, whatever that element is, follow your sun. What does it really want from you? You know, a fire sign sun wants to be in the fire. They want to be in the excitement. They got to have it going on, you know? So make sure you're, you're planning your, yourself to obtain those, that, that kind of lifestyle where you do have enough things and all. So that's what I'm going to make the show about next week. Okay, Bob. 
Okay. So there I am. I've got a judgment card here, which we already talked about this evening is really about new beginnings, Archangel Gabriel coming in to give you messages. But with you on the spread, I also have the two of swords. And the two of swords is relatively speaking, what we call the blind justice card. If you look at the two of swords, it's a card where you've got, you know, um, the justice statue. If you ever see like outside a court building, they have justice, right? And with the swords, right? The swords of justice, the moon is out. It's a crescent moon, which crescent moons are always new moons, new beginnings. But this is an energy of you're not seeing something clearly. This is an energy of there's truth that needs to be revealed and it's being shown you, but you're not looking. You're, you're blindfolded. You don't want to look at it. And I feel like sometimes when we're in grief or we're in very heavy energy and we you know, just don't feel like doing anything or we literally can't get out of bed. It's because we're not looking at the other side. We're so stuck in what has happened that we're not looking at what can happen. So, and I think that's really indicated in this, you know, justice is blind card for you, because here I have this beautiful new beginning and Archangel Gabriel coming to give you messages and show you what life could be and, you know, re rising literally from the grave. And then we've got this card, with it that's showing, no, I don't want to look at that. I don't want to see the future. I don't want to see what could be, and it could be some really good stuff there. So I think sometimes we, in a way, throw out the baby with the bathwater and we throw everything away when we could be, there could be a lot of positivity and some really great opportunity in our life that hasn't happened yet. I have a sign in my hallway at home that says, um, be grateful for all possibilities that have yet to happen. And so that will bring you out of a lot of time grief because you can be grateful for it, you know? So I'm going to keep going down. Um, oh, Marie says she's a Taurus as well. I'm going to scroll down a little bit so I get some people. Uh, I got Joanne on. Hey, Joanne. Okay. Hi, Gira. I wouldn't have time for everybody. Uh, Kathy, uh, Kathy um, Gagliano's on tonight and I don't usually see her on. So I'm going to pull some cards for Kathy. And then if I have time, I'll do Dawn Labasco. Okay. So, okay, Kathy. I haven't seen everybody in so long. I, I need to do an event just so I can see all my beautiful soul sisters out there. I miss you guys. So Kathy, I got the tower card for you. Very unusual, but not in this energy. So let me explain. Okay. Don't get heebie-jeebie. Um, all right. So this makes sense to me. I think the tower is passed. Okay. This is something that, you know, fell things falling away. This is something that you maybe are just on the tail end of. You're going to be okay with this, but then I have this beautiful eight of swords card. And the reason why I say beautiful is because the eight of swords cards for me, Kath, card for me, Kathy is a sign, a card of liberation and freedom. And if I don't know how long you've been on look, listening to the show, but if you listen in the beginning to the astrology, this fits perfectly with it. Because right now things are being revealed, those murky waters within us that really are very sobering and sad. And sometimes we feel grief or disappointment and those things have to rise to the surface. That's what's happening right now. And it's, you know, because I know you're very evolved, it's happening to transform us and so that we can really come step into our potential. And the seven of swords for me, um, I mean, the eight of swords for me is a card of that. It's a card of you have liberation right at your fingertips. All you have to do is step forward into it. Take off that blindfold. Take off the, the fear or any anxiety you have and go forward with what you know your heart really wants to do because you are being your own self-restrictor. And when the tower, tower card happens to us sometimes in life, it's because we're restricting ourselves. And it's, it's the universe's way of showing us if you keep doing this, your things are going to fall apart because you're not out there living your potential. And the reason why I say that is evident to me is this is the moon card. And the moon card in the spread, it's the third card that I pulled for you this evening. The moon card is all about balancing the metaphysical and the physical, the three-dimensional world and other realms. And I know you do that. And so you're so enlightened and so evolved. It, they're asking you to step into that even further now. And I almost have this vision. I do, I shouldn't say almost, I have a vision in my mind of almost like somebody, and it's so strange because, you know, I know you and this is something that I wouldn't normally think of for you, but I'm seeing these like slippers, like not bed slippers, but like dainty, beautiful, like slippers that someone would wear to like to a ball or something back in the day. And I'm seeing these beautiful feet and like some, one of the feet just tentatively taking a step into a new, new world or a new life. And I think that is spiritually, I don't think it's a physical change. I think this is another level that you are now being elevated and ascended to. 
and I think there's some fear there about it or some trepidation, get rid of that because, um, honey, they, they really want to ascend you. And I feel that. So let fall away whatever has to fall away as the tower card often shows us. Step out from this self-restriction and really grab that beautiful moon and sun and all that illumination that they just want to rain down on you. All right. And that's about all we have time for tonight. And um, Spirit was just confirming actually the reading I just did for Kathy because when I looked up, it was four minutes, 22 seconds. And 422 is a big number for me. So I love it when confirmation comes. So this week, as you all unravel and unpack and have those murky waters being risen to the surface by Mars's stick of dynamite, as that happens, check in with your emotions. See what really needs to your attention and what really needs to be sat, sat with for a little bit. And then find the medicine in that to bring yourself into your full potential. Because that's what the Zancuda community is all about. Each one of us just rising up to our full potential. And sometimes you got to be a little brave to do that, right? But I know you all can do it. I'm going to be working on that this week, doing a little transformation and maybe some new perception. And you can follow me on all my social media on Zancuda Soul Space on Facebook on Zenkuda Official, on Instagram. And of course, tune into YouTube because in a few hours, you're going to have Tarot Tuesday up there for anybody who didn't get a card tonight. You can see your cards for the week there on that video. Thanks so much. I'll see you all next week, seven o'clock in the soul space. Share the show, tell your friends. Let's get a really big community going and please subscribe to YouTube. Thanks so much, everybody. Good night.